I pride myself on having manners. Always saying please. I mean, I'm a joker. I like to joke around, but ultimately, you know, I like to give people respect. I think you treat people the way you expect to be treated yourself. And Japanese people, they're all, they always have a smile on their face, whether you bump into them in the street or bump into them at a nightclub or, or whatever altercation you might have with them, you can see that they always have a lot of respect for themselves and for, for others as well. I think a lot of people should, you know, embrace that and implement that into their own system as well. Konnichiwa, hi guys, I'm Hot Since 82 and welcome to my even deeper tour. This time we're on a little island in the Pacific and we're in Japan. Even Deeper is a concept that allows me to spend more time in the country. Usually when I'm on tour, I usually stay for a week or even less and don't really see anything other than the airport and the hotels or the taxis. So I get a chance to play more shows, try more food and uh, see more uh, landmarks of each individual city. The first Even Deeper we chose Mexico. First of all, I love the culture, I love playing there, I love the sunshine, I love the food. And it just so happened to drop on uh, the time that Mexico was getting a little bit of bad press. So since then, we've had a lot of overwhelming uh, response back, uh, showing support, obviously, for the, for the country of Mexico. I've been getting a lot of people coming to the shows. It's been very rewarding for me personally as well. So after discussing uh, where, to, where to take the even deeper tour next, Japan was the obvious choice. A place rich in uh, history and culture. Unlike Mexico, uh, Japan has a small clubbing scene, especially on the underground. Whereas other places in the world, I could be playing to a thousand people or 20,000. Here in Japan, I'm playing to a room of uh, 100 to 200 people. So it's very different, very challenging as well. We're always catching planes to and from, and planes stress me out. In fact, actually, it's not the, not the flight time that annoys me, it's just the rigmarole of going through security, taking all this off, you know, taking all your liquids out. It's very time consuming, and it, and it zaps a lot of your energy as well. So having the high-speed bullet train here in Japan is just, it's just glorious, really. And not only that, you get to see the beautiful landscapes and just parts of the country, whether you be in Japan or anywhere else on a train, that you're never ever going to see if you're on a plane. Goodbye. Goodbye. Yeah. Goodbye. Goodbye. Goodbye, motherfuckers. <laughs> so we're here in Nagoya, which is uh, regarded as the third uh, biggest city in Japan. And tonight I'm going to be playing for the first time in a uh, little club, 200 capacity, called JB's. Uh, it's a long-standing uh, club that's been here for around 20 years, actually, so I'm pretty excited for that. And in uh, the meantime, stocking up on some uh, traditional Japanese food and some amazing sashimi. It's probably the best tuna that we've had all week. Really good. What up? The house and techno scene used to be a lot stronger here. I remember when I first started DJing in the late 90s and seeing mixtapes from Sasha and John Digweed live from places like Womb and Yellow in Tokyo. Uh, but I guess now the scene is filled with more commercial music like uh, J-pop and EDM. A lot of people in Japan work very, very long hours. So you see people on the dance floor still in their suits, still in their work uniforms, just dancing away, whether they're with friends, or whether they're, you know, on their own, just raving, closing their eyes and really feeling the music and just having a good time. Oh shit. <laughs> oh shit, son. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I guess what I love about Japan more than anywhere else is uh, how, how everyone seems to be happy and polite and it looks like everybody treats everybody with a lot of compassion and kindness. And I guess that's a quite a, a unique thing in the society that we live in now. Uh, it's just a nice place, I guess, in the, in the world to be. Like I said, everyone's happy and kind, and that's a good thing.
So after a few days downtime in Tokyo, we decided to do a spontaneous pop-up party, which was a huge success. Uh, these kind of pop-up parties attract uh, maybe a lot more different kind of people that you would usually get on a Saturday night in a club. A lot of industry people from the music scene, uh, a lot of fashion people, and a lot of ravers from around the world as well. I like your pants, they're cool, cosmic. So as well as the pop-up party on my days off, we managed to catch up with an old friend. Uh, actually, he was the fir first person to bring me out here around six years ago. And uh, his, lo his lovely wife, Fumi, decided uh, to cook for us. We had a beautiful home-cooked meal, which is always nice. Always good to get outside the hotels and see some real life as well, see a real life uh, Japanese home. I love that just the look of tofu excites me. Most people think tofu is like bland because it's obviously not so big in, in the UK. And I think being British, all our cuisine is very hearty. Lots of sauces, gravy and things like that go along with the vegetables. So all the sauces drown the vegetables so you never really taste it. Obviously out here everything's prepared more delicate. delicate. Oh, spit it out. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I've quit the music scene and I'm now making uh, home cooking programs. <laughs> I love cooking, that's all I do at home. You know, when I return home, it's all I, I'm in the kitchen all the time. It's the best, it's relaxing. I was served this the other day for the first time and I, and I didn't actually eat it. And that's unusual for me because I will basically eat anything. And yeah, this lovely lady has served it for us, so I'm gonna eat it. So, come by. Sorry. I guess as cliche as it sounds, uh, food and music together makes people happy. I'm obsessed with both. Uh, we went to see a sushi master the other day, a beautiful restaurant, and I was watching him rather closely, the way he prepared the food. There wasn't any set menu, which, uh, kind of light and food just kept coming and coming and it was kind of I guess in a way it was freestyling with the food he gets the ingredients and he, he, he I guess he sees the look on our face and then he keeps going you know if, if the look on our face is, is good then he keeps going with uh, you know the ingredients that he has and I guess in, in another way music's like that as well I play music to the dance floor and I'm looking to see if people are enjoying it if they're enjoying it I keep going and progressing with that kind of sound if I turn around and not, then I pedal back a little bit. And I guess, uh, I guess chefs, especially in Japan, I, I, I like that as well. When there's no set menu, it's, it's more adventurous and uh, exciting. Well, I think like Asian culture is, is a very zen uh, culture where very, they obviously meditate quite heavily out here. It's very relaxed and uh, it's quite a symbolic kind of uh, picturesque image, isn't it? When you think of like, uh, bonsai trees or you know Japanese gardens are always very elegant and very exquisite in many ways and very uh, perfect I guess everything's well there's no stone left unturned it's just a picturesque picture and I'm staring at it right now and it's it's very beautiful so this is Nalu and this is now two locals that have been showing me around Osaka today uh, and now he's actually the, the, the resident DJ at the club and he's going to be playing before me as well so I guess, you know, what kind of music do you prefer to play in the club and especially when you're warming up for an international DJ coming over? どういう、あの、え、どういうシーンで、あの、どういう意気込みでされますか? Mm. 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 Put a bit of, bit, of, bit of everything in the mixer, I guess.
So it's lovely to be uh, finishing the tour in Takamatsu, just getting out of the city. Most people think of Japan as this huge megatropolis, like kind of crazy wacky place, but uh, they don't actually realize that it's got beautiful surroundings, beautiful nature, amazing fish that are only, you know, that, that only swim and can be uh, fished in these areas. And just looking behind us now, it's, it's just absolutely stunning, sunset. Uh, yeah, feeling very blessed and uh, just nice to get some fresh air and, uh, and wrap this tour up, it's been amazing. <laughs> That's right. <laughs>